Oh, here we go. Hello. If you're coming in, I'm going to do a little bit of a yin slow flow tonight. I'm on a few minutes early, halfway through this crazy week. Um, my son asked if the week was almost over, and I was like, buddy, I think this is going to be a really long week. <laughs> um, so we're really happy to be here with you guys. Been really fun seeing our familiar names pop into the members group and keeping things going and we're hoping to have more of a structure for you know regular studio classes through a zoom platform coming to you next week but we're still going to definitely keep a lot of cool things just for you here in this group and um tonight you know wednesday night again i i've had my regular schedule for so many years it just it just seems unnatural to be anywhere else so we're gonna do a little bit of a, a gentle sort of yin slow flow for the next hour um, at all levels. I would recommend having um, a blanket, having a couple blocks if you have a bolster. By now, I'm sure you guys are home practice pros and uh, getting pretty good at uh, modifying everything at home, but it shouldn't be anything um, too crazy. We're still gonna keep it pretty close to the earth because uh, tomorrow is the spring equinox this year. It's the first day of spring. So that makes today the last day of winter and it's been kind of a long winter. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the spring springs into the new season with all of this going on. But you know, that's the thing about nature is nature continues and in the midst of all of the restrictions and sort of fear and anxiety for our society you know there's been all these beautiful reports of just you know uh the the waters in venice being clear of, of dolphins coming closer to land of of deers walking you know deer walking through you know city streets and uh, just you know nature is still doing her thing you know spring still comes no matter what's happening to us and so um the new moon is not until next week so even though we're having that activation of the the fire energy of spring we really kind of don't really start to feel that until the new moon which will be on the 24th and i'm sure i'll be on before then so we're going to focus on the hips tonight because you know the hips are our emotional sort of space and as we're dissolving the transition from winter to spring is movement from water into fire spring is activated by the fire element and so i'll be playing a little bit more with that next week as we move closer to the new moon so we're just going to really tune into the hips just do kind of a slow juicy yin stretch um, modify as you need to stay in poses longer if you have questions i do kind of i can kind of see the comments here i will be speeding back a little bit so just um you know if you're here with me i'm happy to have you and i hope that you're hanging in there and let's do some, some gentle gentle last day of winter almost spring hip opening so let's just sit up for a moment find a comfortable seat Relax the shoulders, lift the spine. And let's just take a big breath in through the nose, fill the belly up. And then open mouth, let it go. And then again, take a deep breath and fill the belly, lengthen the spine. And then open mouth. And one more time, take a big inhale and side out. And so if you'd like to inhale, reach the arms up, gather up. And as you exhale, pull the hands down to the heart. We're gonna take a mudra, Padma mudra. So press the pinky and the thumb together and separate the middle fingers. This is our lotus. And so the lotus is connected to the Svadhisthana chakra, the hips, it's connected to purity and auspiciousness and beauty and blossoming and the reminder that oftentimes, you know, beautiful blessings come from the mud. The lotus only grows in the mud. And I know it feels very mucky and muddy right now, but again, spring is coming and the blossoming is coming. And so just honoring whatever is awakening and stirring within you right now, because we still have ways to connect and celebrate and we can still be outside and appreciate nature and connect to nature and breathe and move. And so we recognize the blessings. We thank the winter for its teaching and its wisdom 
we begin to open to the miracle of spring. And as we move through our hips, as you inhale, we're drawing in this prana, the fire. As we exhale, releasing those cleansing waters. Just take a couple slow breaths into your lotus, into your body. And again, it's okay from the practice you feel sensitive, emotional. You know, there's a lot of emotions coming up right now, everything. Uh, we were talking about the five stages of, of grief in a call earlier. And again, all of those are legitimate feelings, legitimate pieces that we're experiencing right now. Let's just let that flow. Take another big breath. Softly let it go. And then we'll just tone together the sound of VAM, which is the sound of that second chakra, the seed of our creativity, our fertility, our emotional well-being. If you'd like to join in, take a breath. VAM. VAM. And then press your hands into prayer, sealing whatever intention, whatever prayer is in your heart for your practice. And then go ahead and sit up and switch the cross of the legs. I'm shifting over to the mat now. Switching the cross of the legs. Let's just start to circle out here. Just find some juicy circles, starting to warm things up. Grounding through the thighs, letting the head and the neck go, softening the jaw. And just start to let things loosen. And I know we've been doing a lot of circular movements in classes this week. I've been watching everybody else's amazing classes. It's so cool. I don't usually get to see all my fellow teachers teach. And so even if I haven't taken all the classes, I've gone on for at least a few minutes for every single one and just look at their faces and I listen to their voice. And a lot of people said the same things that even if they're not practicing with us, just there's a comfort in hearing that familiar voice that you hear every week. Go ahead and reverse the direction. And so even if you're not practicing with me right now or you're listening to the recording, again, I'm happy that you're here and um, it feels good to know that we can connect. So just start to tune into the body and those little comforts right now, those little ways that we can, you know, find our joy, find our bliss, find that blossoming. And again, spring is very creative. Spring is activating, it's initiating, and it will find a way. <laughs> A few more circles, again, feeling it through the belly. And of course, you know you're practicing at home, so do what feels good. And, and then slowly bring it up, inhale. And then just stretch your right arm over to the right. Left arm can reach up and overhead, you can look down. We're going to be mostly focusing on the low body today, so just getting a little bit of movement through the spine. You can always reach the top arm up or behind the back. I might have some help with my setup today if I seem a little more professional. <laughs> we are figuring this out. I'm not wiggling the camera around. <laughs> Take a breath. Good. And then slowly circle it up and over to the other side. I'm going to stretch overhead, reach. Pull the shoulders down so each side is different. You can look up and down, soften the jaw, pull the belly in. And just breathing deeply. And then again, inhale this time, bring it up, and let's take that simple twist, twisting to the right. So even if I only have a couple minutes, that's usually kind of my go-to is circling the spine, side bend, and into a twist as, you know, all those major movements help things warm up. 
You can look whatever way feels good. Stretch up the neck a little. Breath. And exhale. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale to the other side. Shoulders down, thighs heavy. You can look away from the side you're turning towards or find that's a softer gaze. Breath. And exhale. Slowly unwind. And then take your hands by your hips, stretch your legs out. So take the feet about as wide as the mat. And just go ahead and give them a shake. So let's give these the hip flexors a little bit. Soften the jaw. And then we're going to take the right leg and we're going to cross over the left thigh. And you can keep this really far away, or you can start to walk it in. So you can add a little rock here, a little pulse. If this is too much to be up on your hands, then you're familiar with doing this on the back. And you can roll around. Otherwise, if you want to have a little energy through the heart. Gently pressing through the heel. In yin, we don't overactivate the muscles because we want to focus on the joints. You want to find a place you can keep the body relatively relaxed, but also safe. And you can find a calm, Setting and the closer you bring that opposite heel in, the deeper this is getting into the hips. For some of you, you may be able to bring the arms up and hold here just like you would on your back. But again, if that feels like it's too much work, then just lie on your back and take our figure four. Um, we're just going to be moving into some deeper hip stretches tonight. So I just want to offer a little bit of a deeper warm up. But again, you can take whatever variation you want. And again, this one's kind of nice because you can lift up through the heart here. You can also be up against the wall, too, if you want to back up against the wall. <sighs> Hips feel a little bit more cooperative than they were on Monday. <laughs> they were very tight on Monday. That was also earlier in the day. Last few breaths, and again, keep the neck soft, just however you need to. Inhale. And exhale. So you can slowly stretch the bottom leg out. Be very gentle with the knee as we uncross. And again, just give a little rock through the hip flexors, a little bit of a shake. And then when you're ready, look to the other side. So I'm going to cross my left foot over my right. Just to get if you're home, you can get a little complicated watching the, the computer. So just make sure you're alternating sides. And the further that bottom foot is away, right, the little more space we have to get a little bit of rocking, a little bit of movement. Or just go right down onto your back and hug the leg in or sit up against the wall. And if you are upright, again, just make sure the hands are comfortable. I have my fingers facing away slightly. You can also bring them in. That's going to be a little bit deeper into the chest, so depending on what you're looking for. And then again, the closer that bottom heel does get in. And good breath. So as I said, the inhale is the activation. So bringing in that fire energy that moves in with the spring, helping to purify and energize. And then the water, the last cycle of winter is the dissolving of water. So we're in the last day of that. Melting away whatever emotions have felt stagnant or stuck. You know, do I want to do some good hits tonight? A lot of stuff is... Just in the last week, you know, feeling that anxiety in my body and my mind. Good time for hip openers. On Friday night, I'll be doing a restorative. I'm sure we can use that, so we'll tune into that. But we want a little bit of hips here first. Mm. 
Last few breaths. And again, you can always be curious with the hips, any rocking or shifting. Or a lot of times in yin, we just try to be very still. We find that first space where there's sensation and we breathe into it of a meditative quality. This is a yin slow flow though. So some nights we need a little more flow than, than yin. So listen to your body. Big inhale. Exhale. And again, very carefully bottom leg stretches out. Top leg releases. Give it a little shake. A little rock and then bound angle. So soles of the feet together. And you can always sit up on a blanket or always up on a couch cushion. And you can stay upright. You can bring the hands behind you and start to bring it forward. A little butterfly for spring, of course. And I was reminded um, from one of my teachers the other day too about. You know, this is a time of year where we start to see, you know, butterflies bust out of the cocoons and birds, you know, come out of the eggs. But those processes are pretty challenging. Um, the butterfly has to fight its way out of the cocoon. You know, the birds coming out of the nest, you know, essentially like it's a it's a pretty intense transformation is very intense. And a lot of times transformation does feel like things are falling apart. But it is also opportunity for something new to come forth. And that's a lot of what the energy these next couple of weeks is about from a um, seasonal and a celestial perspective is there's a change in energy and it feels very destructive to some of the old forms and old ways but there's also this just really beautiful potential for again that lotus that creative fertile beautiful blessing in the midst of the the mucky the muddy the the old not to negate any of the pain or fear that we're having because that's not what yoga is about it's not about spiritually bypassing our experience and that's again why we tune into our emotions our hopeful emotions our fearful emotions just be with that breathe with that let that move through you You're always welcome to use your props under the hands, under the head, under the thighs. Always flutter the legs a little bit like butterfly wings. Check it out. Deep breath in and exhale. And let's roll it on up when you're ready. Draw the knees together. And we'll transition to all fours. So if you'd like to find padding for your knees and have things nearby. And we're going to take it into those hip circles again. And so you can start out just by isolating the hips. So you're just circling through the hips, the pelvis, and the low belly. Again, if you want to incorporate a little bit more here, you can start to draw forwards. We want to press the hip flexors forward if you're going to take that option. And then around back. So we'll draw forward almost like you're going to come down to your belly, but getting that stretch in the hip flexors and then pushing to the side. So if that's too much for you, just mostly stay tabletop, but really just focus on feeling that movement through the hips and pelvis. So you're moving side to side, you're tucking the tailbone, opening up. So you can start there. You can always you know, switch around or what feels good, but we do kind of want to be focusing on the hips. And there is a little bit of space in the yin and restorative practice, and um, the Facebook platform doesn't really support us playing music. So you are welcome to open up your Pandora or Spotify or uh, whatever the kids are using these days to make music happen. 
Um, put on your favorite, you know, relaxing music. Or just allow those moments of silence to Let's reverse the direction. If this gets to be too much in either form, you're welcome to go back into a wild child. That's where we're heading here after a few rounds. As you stretch out both directions when you're ready, settle back into a wild child's pose or whatever child's pose. It doesn't have to be wild. And yeah, when you're ready, you can let the knees open up as wide as the mat or keep them hip distance. Let the hips press back, forearms down and or forehead. You can also make a little pillow with the hands and place the forehead or use your block here. If you want a little movement, hips can rock or forehead can roll or just be still. And we'll take a few good breaths here to warm everything up. And you're always welcome to come to child's pose. And if this is not a pose for you, you can lie on the back with knees to chest or in a happy baby. Or you can also always take a downward facing dog. Letting the breath direct down to the low back, into the low belly. Deep breath in and out. And then shift yourself up and we're going to move into a lunge. So however you want to do that, you can just come up to the knees and then we'll swing the right foot forward. We want to have the foot to the edge of the mat. So it's a wider lunge. This is also a good place to put blocks. So the back knee is down and padded. Your hands are to the inside of the right leg. And we'll just keep a little bit of a movement, a little variation on our Ardha Hanumanasana. So as you inhale, come into the lizard. As you exhale, push back. You can also just circle into the hip here again. If you want to just really focus on and isolate the hip. Just a couple breaths. And then we'll settle into our lizard. So when you're ready, we'll bring the hands to the blocks or the head to the block. So the back toes can be tucked or the top of the foot down. And we're drawing the back hip in. So we are getting a stretch through the hip flexor and through the psoas. For some people, they feel that more. Um, but otherwise, into that front leg. You can start to roll. The big toe side of the right foot up. Don't really see that that well there. We don't want to have any pain in the knee. And your blocks again can catch your arms, they can catch your forehead. If at any point you need to find the hip flexor opening or rocking or shifting a little bit more, you can do that. And just really try to deepen your breath. So this can be a pretty intense shape. Lots of deep breaths. And again, if for any reason this is not appropriate for you, so you stay there, but if you need to shift, you can come on to the back and take half happy baby. So pulling that right thigh down. So a lot of ways it's very similar. It's just for a lot of us, it can be easier to do that on the back rather than there here. This is usually where I'm out of the pose and walking around the room. <laughs> Not that I'm avoiding doing the pose. And 
And like I said, I'm going to need to go into a child's pose or a down dog. Breath them. Open mouth. Good. And then start to walk it up. <clears throat> so you can start to shift back into your back leg. Swing the right foot around and push back into a child's pose. If you would prefer a down dog, you can do that. You can even take like a wider leg down dog and walk in. That can feel really good to release the hip without putting too much weight into the hands or your child's pose. And if you take down dog, you can also stretch the right leg up, open up the hip that way. And not a requirement. And this is also where if you know you want to take any other kind of flow, any kind of fluid movement, whether that's circles or cat cow or even a more traditional vinyasa, that's fine too. We're just resting. We do need to rest. Last day of winter. So when you're ready, you can either come down to the knees to then bring the left foot forward, or if you're in a down dog, you can lift the leg up. Feel free to place your block so hands are inside of the left leg or whatever size you didn't do before. And you can add a little bit of movement. You can rock, you can shift, you can circle. Or if you're ready to be still, just go ahead and settle into that stillness. Any support that you need. And you can use your props. Start to roll, roll open the leg or just the back. And often side two is tighter side. So if that's the case, breathe deeper. And that's the thing that's such a, you know, yoga is about relationship with duality. And in the situation we're all in, it's very hard not to get stressed out, right? And we know that the number one cause of disease, right, the immune system struggling with is stress. But yet there's some, some healthy stress, right, for us to take action and to make changes. So again, how do we balance that out? And a lot of it has to do with how our body moves that stuck energy. And emotion is energy in motion. Christy says that all the time. You know, and so all this energy is moving through us. We're getting all this information so fast and it's changing so fast. And so just giving our body this time, really honor yourself if you're practicing right now because it's one of the best things you can probably do for yourself and everyone else in your house. You know, and to keep yourself settled. I'm just feeling, feeling what you need to feel so that we can release what is helpful and what is not. Spring is an action cycle, and you know, a lot of our actions may feel thwarted right now, but the energy will change, change form, change motion. Want to? Again, be able to harness it in a really positive, innovative, um, energetic way. A lot of hope in the spring and element, spring energy. Last couple breaths. Deep inhale and 
side out. And again, slowly walk it up. <laughs> and you can shift back however it feels good. Right into that child's pose, down dog, if you need movement. And so we are going to very briefly take a wide leg forward fold. So if you are in child's pose, I want you to roll up to your feet and then just either step wide on your mat or just open the feet, you know, depending on how your practice is set up. And again, props can be great here. We're not going to be here too long. The feet are comfortably wide. Toes are turned in. Knees are soft. And then you can lower down and you can always stack up more props to make this a lot more restorative. We can also again add a little rocking, little movement. And we'll take a few breaths here. And again, if this gets to be too much, you can always um, shorten your stance. You can also just come back to child's pose or to downward dog. You're just creating a little more space into the hips, into the legs, also getting some blood flow down into the, the brain. It's a good immune support pose too. So a few good breaths here. And you can always take the feet wider as you start to relax and take it into essentially splits in this direction. Or just be where it's comfortable, where you can breathe. And the hands can be, again, wherever it's comfortable, under the shoulders, on your props, you can grab for the feet or the legs. more friends. There you are. You've been spending a lot of more time in front of the computer or the TV. This is a great one to open up the spine, get a little more length. And exhale. So you can start to heel toe the feet in from here. And you can keep the feet wide. We're going to shift into squat. So you can keep this and start to lower down. And we did this in Monday on my class, and I've been done a few classes, lots of variations for squat. You can sit on your blocks. Oh, I have to fall off them. Um, you can sit on the floor. Or those of you who have, you know, a more comfortable squat practice, you're welcome to just hunker down. Pressing the arms to the legs, and again, you can move here. And just be still. And again, if this is too much for you, you'll be on your butt the feet wide like this, 
or you can always go back to soles of the feet together. You can also just take the legs out comfortably wide and be here. Okay. So, lots of options, always. Another great postural position. Lift the upper spine, strengthen the back. Get your squats in every day, whatever way you comfortably can. Last few friends. Deep inhale. And exhale. Okay, so we are going to move into pigeon prep. So you can walk yourself back to all fours. You can push back to a down dog. There's a lot of ways to take pigeon. I do recommend padding under the back knee again. And obviously, we'll talk about some options as well. So you can just begin to draw the right knee up towards the right wrist and then start to open the shin towards the front of the mat. Back knee down, hips are square. You can also have a blanket or block underneath the right hip. And for some people, they like to start to move that shin more towards parallel. But if that starts to pull, that's not necessary. You can have it in. Back knee down, heel kind of straight down the midline. And so you can stay upright, you can be on your props, you can start to lower. If this is not okay, you can come onto your back and take the figure four. You can also come onto your back and take a reclining cow face where the legs are stacked and that's gonna isolate a little bit more into that outer hip. So that's a good alternative or if you know, you have your favorite option. I can't see you right now. That'll be one perk to when we have some class options up on Zoom, hopefully here pretty soon. I'll be able to see you. <sighs> Last pigeon of the winter. Deep breath in, side out. 
And you can just stay where you are. If you'd like to add a couple things here, you can walk it up. First option is the quad stretch, drawing the back heel in. And then depending, if you want to add a little heart opener, so if the left leg is bent back, then you take that left hand and roll the chest open. Adding a heart opener with the quad stretch. I kind of like the twist. So that's the opposite hand reaches for the back foot. And looking up, we're going to twist with the quad stretch and the hip opener. Or just saying pigeon, or you may just be in child's pose by now. That's all right. A couple breaths wherever you are. Draw the shoulders back, but no pain through the joints. Deep breath in. And exhale, let it go. The yogi's choice on your exit. You can come to down dog, child's pose, forward fold, whatever you want to do. Again, if you want stillness, if you want movement. Things are peeking at me on Facebook, so I'm hoping that everything's taken. Mm -hmm. A couple more good breaths. Oh, okay, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. As you're the other one, none of the comments are coming up here, and so I heard a beep, and I thought maybe something was wrong, but it looks like it's there. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I think we're good, though. So as you're ready, other leg comes forward. So if this leg is a little more cranky, again, you can come onto your back and take the eye of the needle or the half cow face, um, putting some support underneath the left thigh, squaring the hips, lifting the heart, staying upright or lowering down onto your props. And as we've already learned, the left side is a little bit trickier for a lot of us. And so just be with the breath, be with your emotions. So I was kind of talk about pigeon being sort of my first, the first yoga pose that kind of woke me up to the practice. It sort of set me on the path of being a yoga teacher was, was this pose. Cause I, I felt something. <laughs> I was very disconnected from my body. I was 19 and it was in a community college up in Oregon. And I've taken a yoga class for PE credits, and it was in this pose. I don't remember how far into the class it was or, or whatnot, but that woke something up. You know, and I think about that with spring. Uh, today is actually my 15-year anniversary in L.A. So 15 years ago tonight, I walked into the studio, which was down the street for the first time. I got off the airplane and had dinner with Christy and another teacher, and we came right here. So, 15 years. Something woke up, and things continued to wake up and activate and transform. And the yoga practice is here. My pigeon pose is here, 15 years later. <laughs> About 16 years from, from that class. But. We never know what's going to come out of the mud. It seems so muddy. Deep breath in and out. 
So you can stay there a little bit longer. If you'd like to add the quad stretch with either the heart opener or a twist, go ahead and make your way up. Be very gentle as you draw the back foot in. And you can do both. You can take a moment and stretch through the chest, and then a moment and twist. Lifting up through the heart, draw the legs in. Don't forget to breathe. Inhale and exhale, release. This time we're gonna swing it on around. So I can't see you, so you could transition another way, but I'm gonna swing it around. Ugh. Give it a shake. And then open the legs wide. So let's find our wide legs. Um, again, this is totally up to your body. So if this is too much, you can have soles of the feet together. You can also return to a squat. You can sit up against the wall. Lift up and you can have props with you. You can stay upright or on your elbows. So you can start to lower down. So again, the, the feet don't need to be overly flexed. We do want the toes and the knees facing up. So our Gubishta, wide legs. I'm having something that gets cranky in my left knee that today has been talking to me. Feel like you're rounding through the pelvis. You can always sit a little higher or sort of manually lift the flesh. So you feel like you're up on the sit bones. Soft shoulders, soft jaw. And so again, you can just stay right here in the fold because this fold can be held for several minutes. I'm going to add a little side bend and twist from this shape if you want to add a little more movement. But again, you can just stay here. Otherwise, stretch the right arm down the right leg and start to roll the body towards the right. You can keep your props nearby. You can hold your with your hand. If you want more top arm, reach up and over. Knees soft, toes facing. And again, you can stay here, you can fold. We're going to add a little twist. So we'll lengthen up. And then keeping the legs grounded, we're going to twist over the right leg. So hips are down, spine is lifted. You can stay upright in the twist. We're just to stretch the left hand down the left leg. It looks like you're pulling yourself over. This can be kind of a deeper twist. You can always have a prop here. I'll show on the left side here just so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'll go back. Opening the chest this way. Or again, you can stay with the side bend or just have enough come back to the fold. You can put your hands 
box of hand on a block. You can also always have a block to catch the head. That's good to keep props around in your yin practice. Catch joints. <laughs> if your knees are getting cranky, you can put that underneath the leg. That's a nice twist, though. So just a few more good breaths into that twist if you're here. Spine is long. Opposite hip is grounded. Deep inhale, stay in your twist. Exhale, bring it out, bring out this winter. And then slowly, just let yourself walk to your center position again. Just roll out a little bit here. If you have a little movement, you can always take a little bit of circle from the center, cat cow. If you need to scooch the legs in for a moment, I'll do those two movements on the other side when you're ready. So as you're ready, slide the left arm down the left leg or whatever side you didn't do. We're going to roll open into the side bend first. Opening the chest here. Softening the jaw. So you can stay here if this is feeling good or go back to your forward fold. We're going to add that little detox twist. So lengthening up, draw the hips back, and then twisting over the leg. And then use your props, pull yourself up and over the ground or through your seat. And as you, again, as you inhale, fill up that back body, exhale and twist. The inhale, we draw in that new life force available as you move towards the spring. Exhale, ring out. Take another big breath. And sigh. From wherever you are, come back through center one more time. And then slowly start to roll it up. Your hands under your thighs, bring the legs in, give yourself a hug. And so to finish our practice, um, again, I'm going to give you a little bit of yogi's choice because I can't see you anyway. Uh, so you could do whatever you want. Um, if you want to take legs up the wall, that can be really nice and grounding and help the blood flow to reverse after all the hip openers. So if you've had enough hips and you just kind of want to balance, that's a really good one. If you have not had enough hips and you want to take a Sutra Kanasana, you can put your pillow or your bolster behind you. Make sure you've got support for the head and neck. And then we'll bring the soles of the feet together. So this is, you know, a staple pose in a lot of beginner restorative classes. So this is a good one because it's going to give us a little bit of a heart opener, which will feel good after that last forward fold and opening the hips. But like I said, if your hips have had enough, and legs up the wall, legs up the chair, legs up the you know, whatever, wherever you are in your house. And just start to settle down. So you just want to make sure you're somewhere that everything can slow down. 
and relax. Roll the head out, gather the shoulders. And then let's take a big breath in together. Fill the belly. And then open mouth. Let it go. And then again, inhale. Let your belly fill all the way up. And then open mouth. Release. One more time. Take a big breath in. And then a good sigh. And as we start to settle, focus on that low belly. Inhale, feel it rise and lift, moving up towards the heart. And exhale, everything softens. And so in the earth journey around the sun, for our side of the, the planet, the spring equinox is when the seed planted at winter solstice blossoms out of the earth, reaching for the sun. So between December 21st and around March 21st this year, like I said, it's on the 19th, you know, the seed got placed in the earth and it was nourished by the darkness. And Around you know, February, the midpoint between solstice and equinox, we see the, the stirring, the quickening, where the roots begin to shoot out and we start to see some movement. But it's really not until spring that we're sure whether or not our seeds have taken root. And that's why sometimes it seems a miracle. It's like everything seems dead for months. And then all of a sudden, you go outside and whole trees have blossomed. And flowers have shot up and it feels miraculous but it's not it's a process that's happening every day and it feels like worlds apart between mud and lotus but it's always happening and right now this transition between winter and spring is feeling pretty muddy pretty mucky pretty dark but the light is there and the flowers will bloom and the birds will sing and the sun will shine. And we'll keep breathing. Just let your body breathe for just a few minutes. Let everything else go. You're held by the earth and the space between the earth and the sun. And tomorrow will be spring.
more than welcome to stay here as long as you want. Highly recommend getting a, a long shavasana in if you need to return to your evening activities and start to stir, wiggle, deepen your breath. Feeling the energy in the body starts to come back. And that is the thing about the equinox is it is equal day, equal night. And while for us, this is the shift towards spring, the fire cycle, but we do still have half dark, half light. And so we do honor the darkness, the winter, the waters that are dissolving right now, the, the mud that this last cycle has created. And it takes a little time. You know, it seems like magic that the caterpillar becomes the butterfly, but the gestation, the fighting out of the cocoon. So honoring yourself or wherever you are in your current process and where we are in this process as humans. And trusting, which I know is a tricky word, right now, trusting in that movement from seed to blossom, from caterpillar to butterfly, from mud to lotus. Take a big breath in. And let it go. And if you are moving your body up, you can roll to one side or rock up. Take your time. Yeah, I can't see you, but I bow to you. And if you are sitting with me, you're welcome to find that Padma Mudra. You know, maybe tomorrow, you know, go out under the sun and take some deep breaths. Do some half sun salutes or full sun salutes. Look for the signs of spring. Because they're there. And I appreciate sharing this space with you all, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. And if you'd like to tone that sound of bomb one more time, and breath in. hearts we miss you and we are sending so much love so many blessings to you and your loved ones and to all beings in the world namaste and i'll see you guys later